Thank you for your support on the previous video. It was very encouraging. And it was very interesting to find out how many ham radio operators are using basic equipment. Some of the equipment is quite old and some of the stations are minimalistic, but it proves to me that it doesn't matter how big your station is in terms of how much gear you've got or how little gear you've got. It's enjoying what you've got, getting the maximum performance, the maximum performance and maximum enjoyment out of you, what you've got. It makes sense, doesn't it? Now, talking about antennas, lots of you use vertical antennas. Is it possible to get a bit of extra gain from a quarter wave vertical, a ground mounted quarter wave vertical, for, for example. Can you get extra gain? I think you can actually. Let's, let's discuss it together. Before we start this video on vertical antennas and achieving some gain. Let me give you a little bit of news. The transceiver that I promised you several weeks ago, or several videos ago, I think, has finally arrived. It's taken a bit longer than normal, but it has finally arrived on our premises, and I will be doing a full review on this transceiver in the next video. But let's have a sneak preview. It's just a very small snippet sneak preview of this quite exciting transceiver. I told you it was very short, didn't I? It's very short, but it's quite a nice transceiver. I've already had a couple of QSOs, but anyway, this is for the next video. Let's now talk about vertical antennas and squeeze in a little bit of gain out of them, if we can. There's not much you can do with a vertical, is there a ground mounted vertical? It's a quarter wave usually, and it's omnidirectional, which means to say the pattern, radiation pattern is in all directions. The angle of radiation is fairly low, but uh, we don't get any of the supposed five degree angle radiation or anything to uh, uh, mean much about because it's cancelled out by the Brewster effect and also, of course, the fact that uh, if you're in a suburban area, the energy at that sort of angle is, is uh, just absorbed. So it's really mythical. And uh, if they tell you there's a five degree angle, they're probably kidding themselves as well as you. Anyway, it would be nice, wouldn't it, to be get get some extra gain out of your quarter wave vertical. And you can actually, and the, the reason I'm doing this video is because I've been talking recently and uh, working on the air, uh, Brian ZL3XDJ, who is uh, a former G4 XDJ um, license owner. He's been in uh, New Zealand now for quite a few years, I think. But he's very interested in the basic antenna systems of ham radio and he works a lot on 40 meters and 20 meters with a ground mounted vertical and actually it's, very, it's a very simple antenna he uses a painter's pole which he got locally um, the painter's poles must be quite long actually i'm not sure how i haven't checked my local b b and q store but um he can get a long painter's pole so i guess around about uh, five meters long and he's formed a vertical antenna for that, and he puts out a very good signal on 20 and uh, 40 meters. But he has been experimenting recently with a parasitic element, and I thought, whoa, that's a good idea, parasitic element. I'll try that because it makes sense. Now, you're not gonna get super gain, but if you can get some sort of gain, then it's worth a try. Of course, it does mean to say that your vertical will be, tend to be directional, not super directional but it will be directional but if you can get some gain into your favorite direction it would be worthwhile now brian is on the air usually in the mornings or mornings uh, for us and evenings for him and uh, he therefore focuses on long path and uh, as i said i've worked him a number of times both on 40 meters and 20 meters so a little clip here of brian's video by the way check out his uh, his youtube channel 
ZL3XDJ. There's some interesting stuff there. And like me, he's got a little bit of a sort of reservation about antenna modeling. He prefers to actually make the antennas and prove for himself whether or not it works. And I can identify with that. Anyway, here's a little clip that um, prompted me in doing some tests myself. This was just simply for forward gain. Simply for forward gain, long path. I wasn't interested in short path or front to back or anything like that. Um, so basically what, what, I, what I did is I, I had the original vertical here, five meters behind it. This is long path fire to the right. Five meters behind it, I put a, a, a parasitic um, reflector. Both of these poles are actually painting poles. So I put a, a parasitic reflector behind. So that's what Brian did. And this is what I did. Now the purpose of this test is to try and create some gain and thereby directivity from a quarter wave vertical. Now the vertical I'm using is this, the Hustler um, 4 BTV, which covers 10, 15, 20 and 40 metres. It's um, a nice antenna. It'll easily stand a kilowatt of power, so even under the new license regulations, you're not going to have a problem. I've got about um, 10 or 15 radials on that vertical, and uh, I found that that, that is uh, more than adequate. And I think to increase the number of radials to get any difference, you'd have to at least double it. So, so 10, 15 radials, most of them buried under the lawn here, be fine. And what we need to do is we need to create a parasitic element. Now the parasitic element I'm going to put around here. This will be, um, this is for the 20 meter band, this will be around five meters away and it will be a reflector. A reflector, um, a wide space Yagi, you can have a reflector about a quarter wave away from the driven element. Um, it makes a long boom, but if you're talking about uh, operating uh, in the garden here at ground level, five metres is very easy. So five metres away we'll have a reflector and that reflector must be slightly off frequency LF to actually act as a reflector. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the reflector around about two or three percent lower in frequency and this is going to really try and mimic a Yagi, a two element Yagi. The driven element will be the uh, 4 BTV antenna and the reflector will be, well, I'll show you in a minute what I'm going to use for the reflector. By the way, one of the good things about having a reflector or even a director, because you can have a director, a director would be on the other side of the vertical and that needs to be closer in. Director would be something like about probably two or three meters. Anyway, we're going to have a reflector because that suits me. And the advantage of having a reflector on the ground here is that you can swing it around. You could sort of move it around, pick it up and move it around. Now, I grant you that you need radials. You do need radials on this um, reflector, but two or three meters of wire, about uh, 10 lengths, five, six, seven, eight, 10 lengths, seems to do the job but you can actually pick it up and move it. Now, obviously you can't move it in mid QSO or anything like that, but if you decide that you wanted to beam to South America or perhaps the long path to the Pacific, then you wanted perhaps to beam it to Canada. You could pick it up, move it around and plop it back in the appropriate place. So you get a, um, a directional gain in the direction of Canada or wherever you want it. And I suppose if you had your vertical in the centre of the garden, some people do, then you've got a 360 degree steering range. You can just pick it up and plonk it somewhere else. When I say pick it up and plonk it, it's not quite like that, but when I show you what I'm using, I think you'll realise you can pick it up and put it down in a space of two or three minutes. So anyway, let me now show you uh, the uh, reflector that I'm using. Now I'm using the JPC-12 portable vertical antenna 
and uh, I've got it packed away in here with the radials. Now, I, if you watch my video on this antenna, um, I didn't use the radial uh, system or radial ribbon that's supplied with it. I made my own bracket, and I've actually got at the moment six radials. Each radial is uh, three meters long, and this bracket makes it much easier to use uh, more radials, uh, thicker wire, and I just uh, I just like it. So basically, um, the antenna mounts or the base of the antenna is goes through there, the spike that goes into the ground, and you've got the kit of parts there. That will give you a quarter wave on any band from 40 metres through to 20 metres. So the idea is to actually make this as a reflector on 20 metres, resonate it just um, below the band, say around about 13.7 um, or 13.8, because I operate on the CW end of the 20, 20 metres for this test. So I'm going to resonate it around about 13, say 13.7 megahertz. That is a reasonable resonant frequency for a reflector. One thing you do need is a little shorting um, connector there because this antenna system has got an SO239. Let me, let me just show you. Um, this spike goes into the ground and the radials are connected to the bottom of this spike. Quite clearly, if we put that into the ground, we've got an open circuit between the uh, radio, the, the, uh, the element and the ground. But we want the element to be actually go straight down to ground. So you need this shorting plug. So I made a little shorting plug that goes in there and it shorts it down to ground. The reason that I want to screw it on and off is because I want, what I want to do is to put an antenna analyzer there to check the resonance, check it's around about 13.8 or 13.7 megahertz, then disconnect it and put the shorting bar in there. And then I know that this is a reflector that's resonant on 13.7 megahertz. And just to show you basically how this goes together, very simple really, um, this is the earth spike that goes through that hole there. We then screw the base on there like that screw that tightly and there we are that's ready to go in the ground we've got two radial um, kits or two radial um, bunches to spread out on the ground so that goes into the ground put the radials out and then we put the rest of the antenna on the top there and resonate it on 13.7 megahertz. So now you can see the base in the ground and the radials ready uh, to spread out. And there's the base in the ground with the radial spread out ready for the element to go on top. And there we have the reflector in place, got the radials on the ground there and the only thing we need to do now is to firstly resonate this reflector and then once we've resonated it put the shorting bar in place and to adjust the antenna for resonance i use the rig expert uh, zoom i love it it's a lovely little uh i say little it's a very handy analyzer and uh, use it all the time yeah i'm not sure whether you pick that up with the sun on it but that's 13.7 approximately now 13.7 megahertz actually was a bit high in frequency so I then adjusted it to 13.3 megahertz. As a rough rule of thumb, the director or the reflector um, should be 5% difference to the operating frequency. So in other words, if your operating frequency is 14.1 or 14.2 megahertz, then you need the reflector to be 5% lower in frequency and the director, if you use a director, 5% higher in frequency, which is the same as a normal Yagi antenna. I use Brian's method because I was using a reflector, and so I put a field strength meter behind the reflector, something like uh, 10 meters away. Fortunately, I've got uh, quite a nice uh, field strength meter, which I'll just show you here on the uh, on the video. Unfortunately, as far as I know, this is no longer available, but it's, it's very nice because it's calibrated in dB and it's a very, uh, very easy instrument to use and uh, seems to be quite accurate. 
I was able to see a significant reduction in radiation from the back of the uh, reflector, quite a few dB. I couldn't measure the forward gain because the position of my uh, um, uh, vertical, the 4BTB, was against the uh, fence of my neighbour, so I couldn't uh, go in, the, in their garden and measure it. However, I did some on-air checks, and initially um, I was seeing a gain of around about 3 or 4 dB, um, sometimes up to what appeared to be a, a, an S point. But I need to do further tests, and I would like now to actually um, reduce the space in between the uh, 4BTV and the reflector and see if that makes uh, any significant difference. But basically, you use the Yagi principle uh, you've got the vertical radiator and then you've got the reflector. And the reflector basically is completely isolated from the main antenna, it goes straight down to ground with some radials. And provided it's 5% lower in frequency, you should get some forward gain. And it's quite encouraging, actually. I've got to do some more tests yet, but it's quite encouraging. And if you use something like this uh, antenna, I'll use the portable antenna, of course, you can use it on other bands. I've used it on 20 meters, but you can use it on other bands. So it's quite an interesting experiment. There is further work to be done on it, um, and uh, as and when I'll report back. But if you've got a vertical antenna, ground mounted vertical antenna, and you fancy doing some tests and you purchase this uh, portable antenna, which by the way we've got in stock, uh, this portable antenna, um, it's, I mean, you can use it as a portable antenna in its own right, but if you use it as a reflector or director, then you can, you must need to have a short in a plug in the base so it shorts it down to ground. But you can move the antenna around the garden, and as I say, if uh, like me, you've got your antenna near one side of the garden, then you can either make that parasitic element a reflector or indeed a director. In the meantime, I hope it's given you food, food for thought. I will come back to this uh, some later date. But in the meantime, thanks for your support on this channel. Do check Brian's um, video channel because it's quite interesting. I, I really like his style. It's down to basics. It's basics. Forget the modelling. Forget what the textbooks say. Try it for yourself. And he's got a very good signal into the UK most mornings. So there we are. In the meantime, you enjoy your hammer, you take care, and as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.